Russians have launched artillery strikes on their own soldiers surrendering to Ukraine in eastern Donetsk region. The incident occurred in the direction of Kurakovsky town in Donetsk region's Pokrovsk district after Russian troops launched an attack on the position of Ukraine's 33rd Mechanized Infantry Brigade and related units. However, the Russian attack was stopped. After yet another failed attack, seven Russian servicemen surrendered as they were bombed by a Ukrainian drone. The drone started leading Russian servicemen to the position of Ukrainian soldiers. However, Russian artillery opened fire on Russian soldiers, killing some of them. The video posted on Ukrainian telegram channels shows Russian hostages laying on the ground before they come under artillery attack. Not all Russian servicemen in the area made it to Ukrainian captivity. Republican Lindsey Graham again called on the White House to give Kyiv the go-ahead to use long-range weapons against Ukraine. The Republican senator stressed that Zelensky's winning plan is to bring Putin to the negotiating table. This can only be done if Kyiv hits Russia harder than it does today. Graham said that Zelensky has repeatedly asked the White House to give the go-ahead for the use of long-range weapons, the Voice of America reports. Graham believes Zelensky's words that if Kyiv bombs all military warehouses and air bases on Russian territory, Putin will have to sit down at the negotiating table. If Biden continues to remain silent, Russia will increase its weapons production every day. Ultimately, such actions will only benefit Russia. The senator also stated that the future US president should also allow Ukraine to strike Russia with long-range weapons. If Kyiv gets the green light, the war could end in 2025 the Republican is sure. If the US leader allows Zelensky to implement all his plans, then there is great hope that the war will end in 2025. At the same time, the West should not allow Putin to influence the politics of this war with his nuclear threats. Putin threatens every time the West provides new military aid to Ukraine. That is why Ukraine has every right to strike military targets on Russian territory with long-range weapons. If Kyiv is constantly restrained, then expect defeat, Graham said. Ukraine should be given the go-ahead to strike at Russian territory so that the conflict can be resolved diplomatically. At the same time, the future US president will have all the Trump cards in his hands to put an end to the war. Recently, Biden received Zelensky in the Oval Office and said that Putin will not win this war. The United States plans to provide Ukraine with a record $8 billion worth of American-made weapons. This should be one of Ukraine's largest military benefits from the United States during the war with Russia. The deployment of aid was preceded by a complex policy. When the U.S. Congress finally approved $61 billion in further aid to Ukraine in April, the administration quickly began spending the most flexible money under that funding. Successive batches of aid included urgently needed artillery, ammunition and air defense missiles. Flexible money falls under the Presidential Drawdown Authority or PDA. This spending capability allows the president to send surplus U.S. military systems to an ally country in the short term, but only if the president notifies Congress and then replaces the shipped weapons with new weapons paid for with PDA funds. Russia is building a new but unidentified structure near the Crimean Bridge, Navy spokesperson Dmitry Pletenchuk said on national television. The purpose of the construction is not yet currently known for certain, Pletenchuk said, adding that it is unlikely to be completed this season. It could be a defense structure, it could be another crossing, but it's a bit early to draw conclusions, he added. Construction on the 19-kilometer-long bridge began after the illegal occupation of Crimea in 2014 and was completed in 2018. The bridge connects the Russian mainland with the Russian-occupied Crimean Peninsula and became a critical supply route for Russian forces after the launch of Moscow's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Pletenchuk said that no matter what the structure is, 
deteriorating weather conditions as winter approaches will make it difficult to complete. They are constantly trying to place something new in the Kerch Strait to build various hydrotechnical or barrier structures. But periodically they end up on the shore after another storm, he said. The bridge was heavily damaged by Ukrainian strikes in October 2022 and July 2023. Following these attacks, Russian proxies further fortified the bridge with underwater barriers. Russian proxy authorities in occupied Crimea regularly shut down traffic on the bridge amid reports of explosions and drone strikes. According to Ukraine's navy, destroying the Crimean bridge now would not have the same effect now because Russia barely uses it for military purposes anymore. Vasil Maliuk, head of the security service of Ukraine, did not rule out that Russia may try to use the structure for weapons supplies again after it is fully restored. The Crimean Bridge is currently the subject of a dispute between Ukraine and Russia at the Permanent Court of Arbitration. Speaking there, Ambassador at Large at the Ukrainian Foreign Ministry Anton Korinevich said Russia wants to take the Sea of Azov and Kursk Strait for itself. So it has built a great gate at their entrance to keep international shipping out while allowing small Russian river vessels in. He said, adding, the bridge is unlawful and it must come down.